Hello everyone, today we'll be talking about how to know the acid-base disorders if you only have basic chemistry available to you. So ABC is pretty important in evaluating your patient and it can give you quite some idea about acid-base disorders, ventilation issues and also oxygenation. Now what should you do if you don't have an ABC available to you? So you can look at your basic chemistry, the level of bicarb and anion gap and these two numbers can give you quite a fair idea about acid-base problems. So let's try to understand this in more detail, trying to figure out the acid-base problems without ABG. So there are two steps in doing that. First, look at the bicarb, and then next, look at the anion gap. The missing part is the PaCO2, and there are few ways that we can figure this out, and we'll talk about this later in the lecture. So let's get the scenario one. If your bicarb on basic chemistry is low, and here we are talking about low bicarb, not slightly low bicarb. So there can be only three possibilities with this. Either there is an anion gap metabolic acidosis, there is a non-anion gap metabolic acidosis, or rarely there can be metabolic compensation for respiratory alkalosis. Now you know that the compensation for acute respiratory alkalosis is pretty weak, as your bicarb only falls by 2 for every 10 fall in PaCO2. And for chronic respiratory alkalosis, the effect is little stronger. However, you know that this is usually seen in patients with chronic hypoxemia, like patients with interstitial lung disease. So this should be obvious. Therefore, you should be able to rule out the third differential by evaluating the respiratory system of the patient and figuring out if the patient has chronic hypoxemia. So if you're dealing with low bicarb on basic chemistry, look at the anion gap. If you have anion gap, you have anion gap metabolic gastrosis and go through a mnemonic gold mark to figure out the underlying cause. And if you don't have anion gap, you are possibly dealing with a non-anion gap metabolic gastrosis and go through the mnemonic ARDS to figure out the underlying cause. ARDS stands for estazolamide, renal tubular acidosis and renal failure, diarrhea and saline use. Step 2. After you have figured out the anion gap, you can calculate the bicarb gap or delta gap to figure out the hidden acid-base disorder and uh, for this please watch my lecture on the ABG interpretation to understand this in more detail. So let's take an example, your bicarb is 16, your anion gap will be sodium minus chloride plus bicarb which is 24. So you have an anion gap metabolic acidosis. Next step is looking at the bicarb or delta gap and after correcting for albumin of 3, you will see that the normal anion gap for this patient should be 10 and normal bicarb should be 24. We remember that there was one to one ratio between anion gap and bicarb. So if your anion gap went from 10 to 24, you should have subsequent drop in bicarb from 24 to 10. But when you measure this patient, the bicarb comes out to be 16. So this means that patient is gaining six bicarb from somewhere else. So he has a metabolic alkalosis as well. And this metabolic alkalosis can be from three different reasons. Either it's an acute metabolic alkalosis, a chronic metabolic alkalosis or a metabolic alkalosis compensating for chronic respiratory acidosis. And we'll talk about this in a little bit more detail. Let's say if your bicarb was 6 for the same numbers, your anion gap is 24 and doing the same delta gap, we figured out that for this degree of anion gap of 24, the bicarb should be 10, but the measured bicarb here is 6. So this patient lost 4 bicarb somewhere else. So it also has another metabolic acidosis process going on. And this can be mostly non-anion gap metabolic acidosis, but it can sometimes represent metabolic acidosis compensating for respiratory alkalosis, which you should be able to figure out clinically. So to summarize, if your bicarb is low on basic chemistry, look at your anion gap. If you have anion gap, you have metabolic acidosis and go through your gold mark to figure out what's causing this. If you do not have anion gap, you are possibly dealing with non-anion gap acidosis and think about ARDS mnemonic like astazolamide, renal tubular acidosis, renal failure, diarrhea, and saline to figure out the underlying etiology, and then calculate the delta gap to find other hidden problems. Sometimes if you don't see any anion gap, you may be dealing with metabolic compensation for respiratory alkalosis in correct clinical settings like chronic hypoxemia. Let's see the other scenario where your bicarb on basic chemistry is high. And in this case, you only have three possibilities Either you have acute metabolic alkalosis, you have chronic metabolic alkalosis, or you have metabolic compensation for chronic respiratory acidosis. 
understand that metabolic compensation for acute respiratory stosis is small, so you can possibly neglect that. Go through your mnemonic DVDs for figuring out the cause for acute metabolic alkalosis, things like diuretics, vomiting, dehydration, and steroids. If you have a chronic metabolic alkalosis, think about chronic diuretic use, steroid excess, and rare syndromes like Barter and Liddell. For patients who are metabolically compensating for chronic respiratory acidosis, think about COPD, obesity hypoventilation syndrome, neuromuscular weakness, and other causes for chronic hypercapnia. So you should be able to figure out the cause for the alkalosis portion by taking a good history and doing a good medication reconciliation. And sometimes there can be certainly more than one issue simultaneously. So be cognizant of that fact. So let's go to our next step, finding pH from your basic chemistry. And here we are trying to figure out the missing component, that's a PaCO2. We discussed cassier bleak approximation of Henderson equation in my previous lecture. Please review that to understand this a little bit more thoroughly. In this case, your hydrogen ion concentration is nothing but 24 times PCO2 by bicarb. And if you look at the last two digits of a pH, that should be equal to 80 minus hydrogen ion concentration. So for example, if your hydrogen ion concentration from the first equation is 35, your pH will be 7.55 because when you subtract 35 from 80, you get 55. Other thing you can do is look at this table and figure out what hydrogen ion concentration corresponds to what pH. Let's take an example. Your patient by carb on BMP is 16 and he has some form of metabolic acidosis. If you assume that the lungs are compensating well, you should be able to figure out expected PaCO2 from the Winters formula that gives you 32. And you can use the previous equation to figure out hydrogen and concentration. In this case, it's going to be 48 and the pH will be 7.32. So ABG should be approximately 7.32 PCO2 of 32 and bicarb of 16. Here, the most important assumption is lungs are working well. If you don't have a good compensation from the lungs, you have to figure out PSU2 by other means. And the other way to figure this out is using antidal CO2. We have talked about antidal CO2 in a lot of details in my previous lecture, capnogram. Please go ahead and review that. To measure capnogram, you need carbon dioxide sensor. And when you exhale, the first air that comes out is your anatomical dead space, which does not have carbon dioxide. So you have a flat line to begin with at PSU2 of zero. Next, the CO2 from your alveoli start coming out and your CO2 sensor can pick it up. So you'll see a sudden transition phase, that's phase two. And as you continue to exhale, the CO2 level is going to plateau off and that would be equal to your alveolar CO2. Once you start inhaling, you go back to zero as your inhaled air does not have any carbon dioxide. So in a normal capnogram, your P alveolar CO2 will be equal to PaCO2 because these two equilibrate pretty rapidly and this will be equal to your antidal CO2. This is a pretty easy thing to measure on a ventilated patient. However, in a non-ventilated patient, you can still measure the antidals. However, the measurements may not be accurate and have some limitations. So understand those and you can look at my previous lecture on the capnogram to understand those limitations. To use entitled as PaCO2, the capnogram should have a plateau phase and there should not be any alveolar dead space. In the top figure, you can see that the capnogram has a plateau phase, while in the bottom figure, your capnogram does not have a plateau phase. So in the first figure, your entitles can approximate to PaCO2 if you don't have any alveolar dead space, while in the bottom figure, you cannot use your entitel as an approximation for your PaCO2. So if you have no alveolar dead space, your PaCO2 will be equal to your entitel. If you have got alveolar dead space with homogeneous emptying of your alveoli, your entitel will be slightly lower than PaCO2 and that would depend upon the degree of alveolar dead space. Please watch my lecture, how to calculate dead space fraction. Links are in the description below. In patients with COPD who have heterogeneous emptying of the alveoli, you will see slope in the phase two and in these cases, your entitles will not reach PaCO2. So do not use these entitles to approximate your PaCO2. So let's assume that your patient has no alveolar dead space and his capnogram looks like as shown in the figure. 
since his capnogram is reaching a plateau phase and n tidal is 18, this possibly represents approximation to your PaCO2. Your bicarbon BMP is 10. So using the modified Henderson equation, we come out to have a hydrogen ion concentration of 43 and subtracting that from 80, you will get the last two digit of your pH. That comes out to be 7.37. So your EBG should be reading as pH of 7.37, pCO2 of 18 and bicarb of 10. In summary, look at the bicarb on the BMP. It can give you a lot of information. If the bicarb is low, you are possibly dealing with metabolic acidosis. Though rarely you can see metabolic acidosis compensating for respiratory health losses as well. If you find metabolic acidosis, look at your anion gap. If you have anion gap, go through your mnemonic gold mark. And if you have a non anion gap, you go through your mnemonic ARDS. You can get your PSU2 from Winter's formula if the patient has good respiratory compensation, or you can use antidal CO2. And you can use those numbers to plug in into the formula H plus equals 24 times PaCO2 divided by bicarb. And whatever the hydrogen ion concentration you get, subtract it from 80 to get last two digits of your pH. If your bicarb is high, this can either represent acute metabolic alkyl losses in which go through a mnemonic DVDs. The other two causes for elevated bicarb will be chronic metabolic alkyl losses and metabolic alkyl losses compensating for chronic respiratory acidosis. The goal of this lecture was to understand that quite a lot of information is already available to you in your basic chemistry. You have to ask questions and evaluate what test do you need to get additional information to confirm or rule out diagnosis. And many times you can avoid getting an ABG. However, if you do need an ABG, please go ahead and get it. Thank you.